In this video, I'll show you how to monitor CPU, memory, and network usage of containers running in Kubernetes. In the first dashboard, we'll focus on CPU. We'll create a graph to monitor CPU usage as a percentage of the limit given to the container. Now, some of you may find it more useful to monitor CPU usage in virtual cores with requests and limits shown on the graph. Also, it's very important to monitor CPU throttling, especially for the CPU-intensive applications. We're also going to run some load tests to verify our dashboard. Next is the memory usage of the containers. The first graph will also show the memory usage as a percentage of the limit given to the container. And the top graph will measure memory in bytes with requests and limits on the chart. We'll use container memory working set bytes metric to measure memory, which is the same metric that Kubernetes uses to decide when to kill a pod. In the third dashboard, we'll measure network pressure bytes received and transmitted, as well as how many packets were dropped due to some kind of errors or collisions. For the load test, we'll measure a network throughput between the pods. Also, if you want to learn how to monitor persistent volumes, you can watch the previous video. To monitor all of it, we'll deploy CA Advisor as a daemon set to collect metrics for running containers and cube state metrics to fetch requests and limits of the containers from the Kubernetes API server. And of course, Prometheus to scrape all of those targets. To reproduce this example, you can use my Terraform code to create Kubernetes in AWS and deploy Prometheus using YAML files. First, we need to create custom resource definitions for Prometheus operator and then deploy the rest of the monitoring components. Create CRUDs first by using create keyword instead of apply. Then apply all the files under monitoring folder. Make sure all the pods are up, including Prometheus, Grafana, CA Advisor, and CubeState metrics. Since we don't have any ingresses, let's port forward Prometheus and Grafana to the local host. If you open targets in Prometheus, by now we should have CA Advisor and CubeState metrics targets. Besides container metrics, CA Advisor also exposes some generic specs of the VM where it's running. Those metrics start with machine underscore. For example, if you run machine CPU cores, it will give you the number of processors on that machine. For this demo, I used T3 extra large CPU instance type, which has four virtual CPUs according to AWS. All the metrics related to containers running on those machines start with container underscore. You can find CPU, memory, network, and file system metrics. But C Advisor at this point does not support all network attached storage systems, such as EBS. So I decided to leave it out for this tutorial. If you want to monitor usage of persistent volumes, you can watch the previous video. Let's start with CPU metrics. As you can see, C Advisor also provides some limits for the containers, but I prefer to take those values from cube state metrics. Now let's log in to the Grafana. Unless you have changed the password in the secret, the default username is admin and the password is devops123. Whenever I start when configuring Grafana using config maps, I always check if the data source is working first. All right, let's go ahead and create our first dashboard to monitor CPU. Let's call it CPU usage. Then if you have a lot of namespaces and pods, typically you would create a variable to use as a filter. Let's call it namespace. To dynamically populate the variable, you would use one of the metrics that exist in all namespaces. For example, CPU usage seconds total, because all the containers use CPU to run. Some metrics may be only visible for a small subset of namespaces. For example, metrics to monitor persistent volumes. After you execute this query, you can choose the variable. In our case, we want Kubernetes pod namespace. In Grafana, select Prometheus data source. I called it main. Then Grafana has a special function label values. It accepts the metric and the label that you want to use. Namespace in our case. Also, let's include all values in case you want to show all the pods in the cluster on the same chart. Now we can create our first graph. Let's call it CPU usage as a percentage of the limit. Same here, select the data source. You can use a variable for the data sources as well. The query that we're going to be using will be 
relatively large. It takes the rate of the CPU usage seconds and divides it by the CPU quota. For the rate function, we need to specify the time interval, which is one minute here. This interval must be at least four times larger than the scrape interval. If you followed along and deploy Prometheus using provided YAML files, you have a 15 seconds default scrape interval. You can also use built-in Grafana interval variable, which will adjust based on the time interval you specify for the dashboard. I recommend starting with a fixed interval and adjusting later on. So if you have a scrape interval of two minutes, this query with one minute interval won't return anything. Keep it in mind. Now, if you use older version of container D or even Docker to run your containers, you may need to remove container D kind label. In the older version, there was a special container called Pause that Kubernetes used to initiate the network. To filter those containers out, you would use not equal to pod. But first, just remove that variable and make sure that it works first. Also, older versions of CA Advisor had different label names. If you face any issues, execute just a metric without the labels in the Prometheus Query Explorer and verify the labels names. Since a pod can have multiple containers and each container may have its own limit, we need to sum by both. To use the namespace variable, just use the dollar sign and don't forget the tilde special character. For the legend, we'll use container name and pod name. I always prefer to move the legend on the right hand side as a table. For the value, you can optionally use last non-null value. Also, let's change the design of our graph. Change line interpolation, width and opacity. Set gradient mode to opacity as well. Sometimes you may have gaps in the graph. To avoid that, I typically use the option to connect null values. Since we divided seconds by the quota, we have a value between 0 and 1. You can multiply it by 100 or use Grafana unit type to convert it for you. To remove extra zeros, we can set decimals to 1. That's it for the first graph. Let's make it larger and set up a refresh rate to 5 or 10 seconds. The global scrape interval is 15 seconds. You can adjust it as well based on your needs. In case you use one of the managed Prometheuses that charges by ingestion and storage, the maximum scrape interval that you can set is 2 minutes. After that, you may have problems with time series data. You can use variables to switch between Kubernetes namespaces. You can also use all options to get containers from all namespaces, which may be helpful in identifying problematic applications. For the following dashboard, we'll use CFS completely fair scheduler throttled seconds to plot the container throttling graph. For this metric, we'll use similar labels such as namespace, pod and container. Let's create a new panel. Call it CPU throttling. This dashboard will show time in seconds for how long the container was throttled. Due to the nature of the pod limits and how it's implemented using C groups, it's almost impossible to get rid of all throttling for CPU intensive tasks, but you can keep it under control. Some people even recommend removing CPU limits for such applications, but you need to do your own research on that topic. Same here for the labels. You we need to remove a kind equal to container label. For the legend, let's use container name label since each container in the pod gets its own request and limit. Let's also shift the legend to the right and transform it into a table instead of a list. Same last non null value. This value is only for the legend section. Now let's customize a little bit the graph. Make a line wider and add fill opacity. For the unit type, let's use seconds. Grafana will automatically convert it based on the value to milliseconds or even microseconds. 
for now, CA Advisor would be the most CPU intensive application in our cluster. That would also be slightly throttled. Other pods that don't use a lot of CPU, such as Prometheus and CubeState Magix, will show zero throttling. Mostly it's because we have only a couple of targets registered with Prometheus. The third graph in this dashboard will show CPU usage as a percentage of the limit. Let's create a few more variables. The first one is pod. We can also use the same label values Grafana function and filter by pod name. As you can see here, to restrict pods to the current namespace, we use this variable. For the last graph, we would also need a container variable. The same logic here, restrict by the pod's name. Also, it would be beneficial to add a namespace variable in this query similar to the pod variable. Alright, we have the all Grafana variables we need for the following graph. Let's call it CPU usage in cores with requests and limits. Select the main data source. For the PromQL query, we'll use the rate function and sum by the pods and containers. As a reminder, you can find those dashboards in my GitHub repository. For the legend, since each pod can have more than one container, let's use container in the pod labels. Next is the limit. Since the same containers in the pod will get the same limits, we can simply use the average function to get rid of extra values. This metric comes from cube state metrics component. You can use it to get limits for both CPU and memory. For the limit, just use the constant string limit. Next, query to fetch the requests of each container in the pod. Exactly the same logic, but metric name requests instead of limits. For the legend, let's use request. That's all for the PromQL queries. Now we can slightly customize the graph. First is the legend, value, line width and fill opacity. For the unit, we can just use short type. Instead of 1 for decimal, let's use 2. Now let's customize this dashboard a little bit. First, I want to update the limit line. To do that, we need to override a variable. You can specify the specific variable name or use a regex expression. Select the limit here. Then remove the fill opacity. Change the line style from solid to dash. And finally, let's update the color to red. You can find it under the color schema. The limit line is done. Next, let's do same customization for the request line. But for color, use green or any other you want. Remove the fill opacity. Convert it to dash and green color for the line. Now this graph looks much better, at least for me. You can switch between namespaces and pods to monitor each container. Let's make it a little bit smaller to run a demo. We're going to use two pods, Ubuntu pod 1 and Ubuntu pod 2, with the default Ubuntu 2204 image. To keep containers running, we can create infinite while loop. The only difference between those pods is resource allocation. The first pod has 500 milliseconds CPU request and 800 limit. The second one has 500 request and 1500 limit. Let's apply them. We have two running pods. Let's go ahead and SSH to the first Ubuntu pod. To simulate a high CPU load, we can use a stress tool. Install it using the default Ubuntu package manager. Then SSH to the second pod and install the same stress utility. After you deploy new pods, you may need to refresh the dashboard to fetch new variables. 
Now we have the default namespace here and two Ubuntu pods. The second Ubuntu pod has 1.5 virtual cores limit and 0.5 request. Let's run the stress utility on both pods with one CPU. Now, initially, the first Ubuntu pod had 0.8 limit and 0.5 request. With the stress tool consuming one CPU, it should be throttled by Kubernetes. Let's wait a few seconds. All right, you can see that the first Ubuntu pod reached the CPU limit and is now throttled by Kubernetes. The pod will still be running, but depending on the amount of throttling, it may greatly impact your application. The first graph shows only a selected container from the specific pod when other two graphs show all the pods in the namespace. Based on the bottom chart, the CPU usage for the Ubuntu pod 1 is 100% and for the pod 2 is about 65%. We can switch to pod 2. Since we have a larger CPU limit, pod usage is somewhere in the middle between request and limit and it's not throttled. Next, we're going to create a dashboard to monitor memory consumption. If you type container memory, you'll find multiple metrics, but we'll focus on the working set bytes because it's the same metric that Kubernetes uses to kill pods if they reach a limit. We call CPU a soft limit since Kubernetes will continue running the pod and just throttle it, but memory is a hard limit. When a pod reaches 100%, it will be killed immediately. We're going to call this dashboard memory usage. Also, let's create a few variables right away. The first one is the same namespace. For the query, you can use one of the memory metrics or just keep the same CPU. It does not matter here. For memory usage, let's also include all option to monitor the whole cluster. The next variable is a pod. And a final one is a container. The first graph will also show the memory usage as a percentage of the memory limit given to each container. To calculate, we'll divide the memory working set bytes by the limit. This will also give us a value between 0 and 1, which we can convert with a Grafana type system or multiply it by 100. For the legend, use container in the pod. Then pretty much the same customization settings. I'll point out only the differences from now on. For the unit, use a percent between 0 and 1. That's all for the first graph. The second one will show the container memory usage in respect of requests and limits. When we monitor the CPU, we use a counter metric type that always goes up. That's why we need to apply the rate promql function. When we monitor memory usage, Prometheus uses a gauge metric type. A gauge can go up or down and it's perfect for monitoring memory usage or maybe a temperature. That's why we can simply use this metric and add labels to filter pods and containers. It's the same metric that we use in the CPU chart. To get memory limit instead of cores, use bytes. And finally, the request line. That's all. Now let's customize it in the same way we did for the CPU. Change line styles and update colors. For the metric, use bytes. and override limit and request. 
All right, we all set. This requests and limits match the pod spec. Now let's minimize it again before the demo. Go ahead and SSH to the Ubuntu pod 1. For the stress, let's use 700 megabytes. It should be in the middle between the request and the limit. On the bottom chart, you can see that it's around 70% of the limit. I would keep both those charts. The bottom one can also show the memory usage for all pods if you select all option. The last dashboard will be used to monitor network usage. We're going to use bytes received and transmitted as well as how many packets were dropped. Optionally, you can also follow the same logic and add errors. In one of the following videos, we'll create a dashboard using the four golden signals from the SRE book. There, we'll use network saturation instead of simply measuring how many packets were dropped or transmitted. Let's call this dashboard network usage. We would need the same variable here. The first one is a namespace, then the pod. We don't need a container variable, since all the containers share the same network within the pod. This graph will show how many bytes were received and transmitted. So let's call it network I.O. pressure. We'll use exactly the same logic here as the node exporter full dashboard, which you can find it on grafana.com, except that we'll use the pods instead of nodes metrics. First, PromQL will output received bytes by the pod. Now here we use irate instead of rate function. On the high level, it's recommended to use irate for high volatile values. The network is one of those. Also, let's use the same approach as node exporter dashboard and convert bytes to bits by multiplying it by 8. For the legend, use receive and the name of the pod. For the next query, use transmitted instead of received. You can plot these metrics on the same graph or may choose to use separate graphs. It's up to you. Here we have transmitted and the pod name. The same legend on the right hand side as a table. Last non null value. Line width and fill opacity. For the unit, use bits. The last customization is to flip the transmitted values to the negative on the y-axis. We need to use rejects since we combine transmitted with the pod name. The final graph will show the packet drop rate, which in normal conditions should be zero or close to it. We'll also combine received and transmitted on the same chart. For the unit type, use packets per second. That's all dashboards that I wanted to create for this video. Now let's run the final test. Let's measure the network throughput between the pods deployed on the different nodes. We have some gaps here because I forgot to select connect all new values option. Let's fix that. To measure network throughput, we'll use iBerf utility. We need to install it on both Ubuntu pods. One pod will act as a server and the other one will be a client. 
Since we don't have any services, let's grab the IP address of the first Ubuntu pod. Optionally, we can add by dear option to transmit and receive at the same time to get a more accurate measurement. I use T3 extra large EC2 instance type where the declared network performance is up to 5 gigabits per second. Based on the Prometheus, we got similar results. Keep in mind that the network data transfer between pods in the same availability zone is free, but for multi az you will be charged for the network usage. The dashboards that we created are a good starting point to monitor applications in Kubernetes, but it's not enough to go into production only with these dashboards. In the next videos, I'll show you how to add monitor coverage using other approaches such as four golden signals and other methods. Also, we'll create more applications and language-specific dashboards in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.